Hi, I'm Ethan Weiner of Real Traps. This video will explore what diffusers are and how they work, and will let you hear them in action. Most people have no way to hear what diffusers do or how they sound in a room. As you probably know, acoustic treatment gets very little respect, even by people with a lot of money invested in their gear. It's not like you can walk into a local hi-fi store or guitar center and see high-quality diffusers, or easily take diffusers home to try them out. So we'll record some acoustic music in the proximity of diffusion and compare diffusion versus absorption and the bare wall. Some people believe that curved surfaces or even bookshelves are useful as diffusers, so we'll compare those too. The main purpose of diffusers is to reduce flutter echo and comb filtering, but without using absorption, which reduces reverb and ambience. Diffusion lets you retain a room's liveness and ambience while avoiding these two common acoustic problems. Comb filtering is a hollow sound caused by nearby reflections and is described fully in another Real Traps video. Flutter echo is also common, and most people have heard its characteristic boing sound, even if they didn't know that it's called flutter echo. This is what flutter echo sounds like. With the side walls so close together, you can clearly hear a pitched tone, but in a large empty room, you'll hear the individual echoes make more of a rabbit-tat-tat sound. Either way, Flutter Echo imparts the same undesirable pitched tone to everything recorded or played in that room. Diffusers are used equally in recording and listening rooms. In recording rooms, they reduce the strength of reflections getting into the microphones by scattering the reflections rather than directing them back towards the sound source. This scattering also reduces the sound of instruments and guitar amplifiers from getting into nearby microphones meant for other instruments. In a control room, diffusers are generally placed on the rear wall behind the listening position to reduce reflections from that wall and make the room sound larger than it really is. I'm not a fan of using diffusers at reflection points, at least not in smaller rooms. My living room is 16 feet wide, and when I replaced the absorbers with diffusers at the side wall reflection points, the sound was noticeably worse than with absorption there. Perhaps in a very wide room, diffusion would be okay, but the diffusers would have to be pretty far from your ears. Likewise, diffusers on the front wall won't do much unless you have dipole loudspeakers that radiate sound equally front and back. With normal box speakers, little of the speaker's sound reaches the front wall. However, some people use diffusers all over the entire room, and I can't say that's wrong. George Massenberg is a very famous mastering engineer, and this is the room he works in. Rear wall reflections tend to be very damaging, yielding many equally spaced peaks and deep nulls because the loudspeakers point at that wall and the reflections are directed straight back at your ears. When the wall is not very far behind you, less than say 10 feet away, reflections at mid and high frequencies are considered early and can harm imaging. The reflections are also stronger due to the close proximity. Even when the wall is farther away, damaging peaks and nulls encompass the entire audible range starting from the low base. So the best solution for a rear wall is diffusion for mid and high frequencies, as well as bass trapping for low frequencies. All domestic size rooms need absorption, especially at bass frequencies. Many rooms are treated entirely with absorption and there's nothing wrong with that. All acoustic problems can be solved using only absorption. But when cost is no object, diffusion adds a nice touch and can make a room sound even larger than it is. Unfortunately, good diffusion costs more than good absorption. Most inexpensive diffusers are too shallow to work to a low enough frequency. To be useful for music applications, a diffuser needs to be at least three inches deep, and deeper still is even better. As a diffuser is made deeper, it becomes effective to lower frequencies. All diffusers create audible artifacts. Diffusers are usually placed at least six to 10 feet away from instruments, microphones, and listeners. With that much distance, the artifacts are far away, making them too soft to notice. For the purpose of this video, we'll be much closer to the diffusers and other surfaces to magnify their effect, making the artifacts easier to hear. It would be great to treat an entire room with different types of diffusion and invite all of you to visit in person to hear them. Since that's not practical, this is the next best way for you to hear what diffusion sounds like. This is the Realtraps QRD diffuser. QRD stands for Quadratic Residue Diffuser, which describes the math that defines the diffuser's shape. A clever and unique feature of the Real Traps QRD is that it serves as a bass trap below about 500 hertz, rather than just reflect below its active diffusing range. The Real Traps diffuser is one-dimensional and diffuses sideways only. A two-dimensional diffuser radiates both horizontally and vertically, 
But in most applications, like a rear wall or a side wall, horizontal only is preferred rather than waste the acoustic energy by sending it towards the ceiling and floor. The different well depths of a QRD diffuser break up the reflections and stagger their delay times, making the reflections less coherent. This is a shallow uh, well, this is uh, much deeper, this is not quite as deep. In a similar way, a stepped rear wall can reduce the coherence of reflections at base frequencies to minimize peaks and nulls. This is not a complete solution to base problems, but it can help. The deeper the rear wall wells are, the lower in frequency the improvement extends to. So each of these uh, diffuser wells is a different depth, and each one has its own resonance. When I talk about artifacts from diffusers, in the case of this, the resonant, the resonant wells are artifacts, and you can hear that. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. So one of the devices we're going to test is this polycylindrical uh, deflector. I hesitate to call it a diffuser, but I get it, it does diffuse. But it sends sound off in different directions, and you can see that. There's an outer curve, and this shape is good. It deflects sound well in all different directions. But there's also an inner curve section, and this shape is not good. The more the outer surface curves, the worse the inner area becomes because it focuses the sound. That is, focusing is the opposite of diffusion. For this design, we chose to use one-third of the round tube for each section rather than half to reduce the focusing from the inner part. Absorption stops reflections completely, though even good absorbers reflect the highest frequencies a little. Absorbers also absorb less when sound strikes at an angle rather than straight on. Sort of like the way a rock thrown across a lake at an angle skips over the lake's surface. Now this bookcase will absorb a little and deflect a little, though it's not really a diffuser in any way one could define a diffuser. Though uh, these are acoustics books mostly, and uh, maybe that helps a little bit. This brings up a good point about all the diffuser types. My personal interest is mainly in small room acoustics. By small room, I mean a room the size you'll find in most homes. A very large space, such as an auditorium or the live room in a million dollar recording studio, has very different problems than the small room most of us record and listen in. In small rooms, it's difficult to get much distance between the performers and their microphones and the room surfaces. So diffusers that work well at close distances with less audible artifacts are more appropriate for people recording and listening in smaller rooms. You'll see photos and plans for polys like this on websites and in books like Alton Everest's Master Handbook of Acoustics, but polys are best reserved for rooms much larger than most of us have. Some people believe that poly diffusers are as effective as QRD types and suggest they are also easier to build. Let me tell you, this poly was a royal pain to make. I wanted the same 6-inch depth as the Realtraps diffuser, which meant starting with a 24-inch diameter Sonotube cement form. My partner Doug bought this locally, but it was 12 feet long. So first the tube had to be cut shorter just to fit in Doug's van, then trimmed to exactly four feet, and finally sliced lengthwise into equal thirds. Both operations were difficult and time-consuming, and both required my friend master craftsman Phil Kramer to make a custom jig to hold the tube while it was cut in each dimension on his table saw. Then the sections had to be glued to a plywood backing, primed, caulked, and given two coats of paint. All told, it took about six hours to make this one small poly. And we can do a similar test with the poly. Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. The conventional wisdom is that diffusers should never be close to an instrument, microphone, or listener. It's generally accepted that for each inch of diffuser depth, you need to be about one foot away. However, in my experience, QRD diffusers are much more tolerant of close proximity than other types. Even when only a few inches away, a QRD diffuser sounds noticeably better than a bare reflecting wall. Indeed, this photo taken at George Lucas's Skywalker Sound was on a recent cover of Mix Magazine. Here you can see diffusers being placed very near to musical instruments intentionally to enhance the sound. In a moment, you'll hear recordings made with an acoustic guitar and its microphone only six inches away from each surface type.
As we have seen, diffusers break up reflections to avoid comb filtering and flutter echo, and also to reduce leakage into the wrong microphones when recording. Even though mathematics is needed to design real QRD diffusers, it's not difficult for those of us who are math challenged to understand how they work. Sound is scattered instead of reflected directly back towards the sound source, and the different delay times also reduce the coherence of the reflections. Diffusers are not meant to be used extremely close to a performer, microphone, or listener, but even close up, they're much better than a bare reflecting wall. Whether diffusers should be used close up or not, listening near to them lets you more easily hear their coloration. We also saw that a shelf full of books is not much of a diffuser, no matter what you might read on the internet. And while both QRD and poly diffusers can both break up flutter echo, in domestic size rooms, QRD diffusers clearly sound much better. Thanks for watching, and here's a quick recap of the sound reflected off each surface.